Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Regester, and I'm joined as always by Rob Fox, Jake Goldman. What's up, man? You ready to go? I am ready to go. I don't really care about your trip to Costco. I don't really care about Rob's kids. I was about to say, now, Jake, you were off mic. You said you were saying how you went to Costco today, <laughs> and something interesting happened there. <laughs> I'm not us, talking about it. Tell no. Tell us about that. No, Stop absolutely it. not. Were they out of rotisserie chickens? They, I don't out. care about your Costco trip. I don't care about you moving limestone in your backyard. I don't <laughs> care about your unemployment. Someone's been reading the comments. Depressed life. My life's great. I got a tan, brother. You're just living I Florida life. I would like to watch you move limestone in your backyard. We're not doing this. So that I can pretend that I am an Egyptian foreman. Make sure to subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash softcore history, where we get a little bit more fast and loose with the topics. <laughs> Than this? I want to kind of keep it on the straight and narrow today. I feel like this is a trap. It's not. I just have a lot to cover. Fair enough. So patreon.com slash softcore history, two additional episodes every week. Uh, two years of evergreen content, youtube.com slash softcore history. I think someone said it took them six months to listen to our Patreon. They did. Yeah. I, in, I think in a comment, right? It was a really review. nice comment or a really nice review. We'll read some reviews actually at the end of the episode. Yeah. There's some so really good ones. But he said it took that. him about six months to get through our back catalog. So a lot of content. And he listened like every day. Yeah. Nonstop. So that's how much content we have. A lot. Some would say we're too exposed. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. Short us. <laughs> short, definitely short. Short, yeah, short us history. by subscribing. Softcore History LLC. $5 yeah. a month. $100 if you want to be a baller. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's an option. Somebody did it once for one month. Be our sugar daddy. <laughs> they didn't realize it was a $100 a month. <laughs> right. They immediately <laughs> canceled. You can also get a discount for the year, $54 for the year. Yeah, you save six dollars. We'd prefer you don't do that. Yeah, uh, no, I think that's fine. <laughs> I'd rather have you locked in for the year. I agree. Yeah, yeah. softcorehistory.com for merch, and I'm excited for this. Let's get into it. Um, last week, we touched on a lot of cults. Rob did an episode on some British dude who uh, could purify women by fucking them on a pool table while the rest of the church sang. Yeah, did a Patreon episode on the end times yeah. and how many times we've come across the end times. It's a lot of times. Every 30 years? It's once a generation? Once once a generation. Yeah. yeah. So I want to get in on the action, guys. Okay. I want to do my own cult leader. All right. Except I'm really raising the stakes here. Yeah, you were talking earlier today or yesterday. You're really gassing up your, your episode. You're like, this guy is so much more fucked up than your guy. I wonder if it's someone I know. I'm willing to say today we're going to talk about perhaps the worst person in human history. Is okay. It, is it JJ? Jim, JJ. Jim Jones? Fuck no. Good. Good. This guy's w- w- responsible for way more deaths than Jim Jones. I cannot wait. This dude is responsible for way more deaths than Hitler, Stalin. Oh, we're doing Muhammad? We're not doing Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. You said a cult leader that's killed billions. <laughs> hey, you millions. said that. You said that. Dan didn't say My it. name is Jake Gold. <laughs> Fuck you. That's Rob Fox the <laughs> third. Uh, his social I have on my phone. I'll look JK. it up later. No, we're going with China's Muhammad. Okay. We're talking about the Taiping Rebellion. Oh. You hear about this? Know about this? <laughs> the, the Taiping Not Rebellion. Really. I know the Boxer Rebellion. Um yeah, Taiping. Taiping. That's uh the, Yeah, I know that one. We're, we're talking about a man named Hong Shi Quang. And he is, I'm going to make you the argument today, the worst human to ever live. Yeah, but, like, who amongst us hasn't accidentally killed, like, six figures worth of Chinese people? If you... If you use an iPhone. Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, uh, at least a million people made your iPhone. Yeah. And probably died. There are... There he are is responsible for, I'd argue, nine figures. Nine? Nine. Figs? nine. A, a bill? A bill. No, nine would be a hundred million. Oh, right. right. No. Yeah, I would. Oh, no, you're right. We're bad. We're Ten. not softcore math. Well, yeah, we're not even softcore math. <laughs> no, we're not even that. Still. Yeah. A hundred mil plus. Hundred million. Mil. And this wasn't some ancient time. This wasn't no. in the medieval China. Well, they have more people now. Yeah, we're talking about the 1800s. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is one reason Japan stacked so many numbers in World War II, is there are just so many Chinese people. They just, and, and when you have no regard for a land filled with people as you occupy it, yeah. boy, you can put up numbers. Yeah, those two guys had that race. The, with the heading s- race? Yeah. 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 Now, forgive me if I mispronounce names in the future. From here on out, I'm just going to refer to him as Hong. Sounds good. That's fine. Hong. So Hong was born January 1st, 1814, on a farm as the youngest of three boys to a lower class Hakka family in southeast China. Hakka is a group of people in China not that are dance, huh? not necessarily regarded as the best. Is that kind of lower class is Hakka farmers. an ethnicity or something else? It's, yeah, an ethnicity. Okay. It kind of groups together people that migrated there 800 years before this. So... In China, white people, the basically white people in China, we said before, are Han. Han, Han Chinese. Yeah. Han Chinese are what you think of when you think of a Chinese person. They are the sort of white people of China. And boy, if you think white supremacy is bad, <laughs> <laughs> you should look into Han supremacy when you get the chance. It's mystical. <laughs> like, it's mystically racist. Yeah. Which is sweet. Well, white supremacy is also, if you dive in. Very mystically racist. It's like, but it's half half asked. Oh no, it's 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 from like spiritualism era. Like, yeah, it's from the like Blavatsky era. Yeah, of mysticism. And then right? you know the KKK calls their a leader a wizard or something. That it, was all so smart in their end because like I remember a while the KKK was using World of Warcraft like to recruit people, and it's like, how would you like to be a real wizard? <laughs> Like, that's got to be in the... Wait, has anyone ever memed that? (laughs) You're a wizard, Harry. (laughs) Cut to. (laughs) You're a grand wizard, Harry. (laughs) That's been done. That has has to have been done. done. If you've thought of it, we we didn't think of this. From a young age, Hong gravitated to academics, so his family invested a ton of money and resources into his formal education that they did not have. So he could complete the civil service exams, also known as the uh, Keiju and land a high-paying gig in the Chinese government. That's nice of them. Mm-hmm. They yeah, you know, it's like first kid to college type of situation. Yeah. This was during the Qing Dynasty. Okay. There were no ordinary, simple mathematics or reading comprehension tests. Every year, over a million applicants would grind over these things, and some only had a passing rate of 1%. What? That's a stringent test. Mm-hmm. That's cool. So this is to become part of... This is pre-communism, obviously. So This is like, to get involved in the Chinese government. Yeah, the dynastic government, yeah. I guess. Yeah. He initially crushed his preliminary exams, placing first out of all candidates. He then moved on to the imperial exams, which he then failed. What was the passing rate on those? Again, 1%. Damn. So it's like double stack, 1%. Every, every exam is essentially 1%, 1%, 1%. Damn. Not the biggest deal if your mo- your family had money, though, so you could retake them. But again, it comes from a poor Hakka family. So Hong moved back to his village to become a school teacher and save up money so he could once again take the test. He was able to do so at 22, only to fail for a second time. Okay, I'm starting to feel a villain origin story building here. You're starting to see kind of a Hitler story here. I'm just not that good. Didn't get accepted. Yeah. My art sucks. But perhaps maybe he wasn't being accepted because these tests were rigged. Against Hakka people? Against poors. Oh, well that, you know. How were they rigged against poor people? You could honestly pay to pass the test. Okay. So not so much rigged against poor people as rigged for rich people. There's Not even rigged for them. It uh, was w- wow. Okay. Uh, not shocked. That this is how you're... I, I'm watching you do the mental gymnastics out loud. I'm not saying it's not corrupt. I'm just saying it's not like they wrote the test to somehow flunk out a haka. Like, it was just like, man, whatever. They'll just pay to, and we'll give it to them. That's still rigged against poor people. They, it makes it sound like the test was written to fuck over poor people. It's more the system is fucking over poor people. Which is way worse. I'm and not grading it at, at all. I'm just saying it's but, not the but, test. No... But the test is a byproduct of a system that is in it itself rigged. So, yes, the test is rigged. It makes it sound like... It's like the SAT, right? It makes it sound like, oh, poor people can't take the SAT. because It's not... It, it, first off, that's not even true. But it's, it's not asking them to do, yeah, a fucking balance a checkbook. But, like, 
it's it's more like state tests nowadays where richer schools do better on those tests so they get more public funding no child yeah which is stupid as fuck but yes yeah and then the poor so. schools get worse because oh, you know, I guess they don't you have the money or resources to actually provide for these kids. And then you teach a test and you don't teach a subject anymore. And yeah, it's why yeah, it's all about passing the test. Yeah, that's why people. And nobody suck. gives a shit about the kids. Life yeah. is a test, and no one gives a shit about you. Sounds like we're training them exactly like we should. Who's testing you in life? Down in the dumps, defeated and humbled once again, Hong was ready to accept his fate and his lot in life until. He stumbled into something that would change his life in the country of China forever. A Kalashnikov AK-47. No. Murder. Just, <laughs> hey, you can kill people. You can kill people. I'm talking, of course, about Christianity. Oh, sick. Yeah, that'll do it. I thought you said this guy was a villain. Is he a Catholic? Protestant. Oh, yeah, villain. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're anti-Protestant on this podcast. Except he's not really a Protestant because he makes his own thing. That's, That's still Protestant. It, that is still Protestant. Protestant can be whatever you want. But yeah, he built off this Protestant missionaries. Technically, this church is Protestant. The, the Pentecostal one. Yeah, that this used th- to those be. guys just make everything up. Yeah. So he ran into a man by the name of Edwin Stevens, a Protestant from the good old U.S. of A. and former teacher at Yale, who oh. went to spread the good word of Christ in the East. Through an interpreter, of course, because he didn't speak Chinese himself. Yeah, this Yale guy sounds uh, like a failure, too. Unimportant. You don't need to speak Chinese in China? No. No. Hong but was pretty captivated by the pair and took home some literature that he stashed away for a bit and ultimately forgot about for a good portion of time. Until just it kind of left him? it on the, uh, the bookshelf. Yeah, man. No, he sounds like, well, he sounds brilliant already because he's like, he's going to just use it later. He's gonna keep, like it when in, it's, yeah. keep it in the bank. Yeah, just like I might be able to manipulate this somehow. It's like when you're playing a video game and you just stash a bunch of loot as you keep going. Yeah, I'll grab that. Might be useful later. Yeah, yeah, and you keep being like, should I get rid of this? <laughs> should I? I don't know. Should I throw this Bible away? Then, like a level later, they're like, "Where is your Bible? <laughs> <laughs> you're dead." He returned to teaching to save up for the exam once again, and unfortunately failed for a third time. Damn. Years of studying and stacks of cash were essentially lit on fire. And Hong had a complete mental breakdown. This is also why these are bad ideas. <laughs> he was in such bad shape that his family started making arrangements for his death. And honestly, the world would have been much better off if he took his own life. Okay. Hong, during this delirium, supposedly fell into a deep hallucination for several days. Important. And had a detailed vision of heaven where he encountered his celestial family distinct from his family here on earth his heavenly like father in a black dragon robe and golden beard gave hong a sword and asked him to combat the evil spirits who had taken over his realm with his brother jesus christ hell yeah jesus was hong's brother in this vision yeah mm-hmm. and so god was the dragon man with the gold beard uh, of course mm-hmm. who else is god he didn't that? know that at the time Right. I mean, I think God likes to present himself. It's like uh, contact. Yeah. We're like, we decided we should look like your father to present a way that, you know, makes you comfortable. And like, God is like, I'm going to present what a Chinese guy would think was awesome. You know, I'm Dragon pre- robe. Yeah. I'm going to present how this white guy would think was awesome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, there's some, I mean, the dragon robe guy would appeal to masses here in America as well. Yeah. Like any mall ninja kid, but any weeb, yeah, just a kid with a body pillow, right? <laughs> yeah, what what did God present like to you? During this dream, he even saw Confucius getting the business from his heavenly father for leading China astray. So, so wait, he saw Confucius getting punished by God. I just gonna pretend it's God spanking Confucius, but <laughs> getting the business, yeah, he's getting bent over. I imagine just maybe with like a bamboo stick. Oh, just like a big switch, little whip. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. The vision stuck with Hong. Those close to him said he was never the same. And he actually became more kinder, confident, and smod more initially. It's that most crazy people do. Yeah, speaking to God high, you get, you know. I I saw God. (laughs) He spanked Confucius. I hope you have a good day. They're like, oh, he's doing better. (laughs) He's He's doing great. He was speaking gibberish before, so. I didn't think he was going to come out of that, that hallucination coma, but he seems wonderful. 
He went back to teaching the youth for a few more years, bouncing from village to village, and in 1843 decided to give the exams another crack. <laughs> Fourth Good time's a charge. Lord. He's the... Sh- what is he? 18 what? 1843. Oh, so he's almost 30? Yeah. yeah he, he's, he's the 29. Buffalo Bills okay. of the fucking Because he was born exams. in 14. Yeah, so he's 39. Okay. 29. Or 29, I mean, yeah. yeah. He failed again, perhaps because, again, like I said... These exams may or may not have been rigged to those from a wealthier background who bought their spot into the government. Feeling down once more. Which, hold on, by the way, still a thing in China. Very hereditary to get into the Communist Party. Yeah, of course it is. Hmm. You, you mean the people that the formed the revolution pulled the ladder yeah, up and yeah. took control? Definitely, because yeah. we I've told it before. I've told the story before on the show about how Spencer was hooking up with that com- communist chick in China, like a Chinese communist. She's on the phone with her dad. Her fam- she, he was, and he was like, "Your family's in the party because there's families that are in the party, and then there's just you're just Chinese and here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know just, what I mean? And that's what this yeah. guy was clearly dealing with. Like his family, obviously. Not in whatever the party was back then. Like not the dynasty was, yeah. Yeah. So he was down, and he went back home. And you know what? He went to his bookshelf, and he remembered he had that Christian pamphlet that he received years earlier. And he went I, to Africa and saved lives. He saw what he was pretty sure was a, the Abrahamic Judeo-Christian God spanking Confucius. And he waited four years to go pick up that pamphlet. Just forgot about it. <laughs> After he saw God spank Confucius? He didn't know who it was. Okay. He has no idea he about just, So he kind of retconned it a little bit. He was like, oh, yeah. Goldbeard was Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And his brother. I just thought it was a guy. Yeah, no. Hong came to the conclusion that the bearded man was the Christian God. And his brother, in general, by his side, fighting the evil spirits, was Jesus Christ. Hong came to the conclusion that he was the second son of the Almighty. Ah, I see it. That's some real A to B thinking. Straight line. Mm -hmm. It was now his duty to bring righteousness to the world as he had in his vision. He went around tearing down statues of Buddhism and Confucius, began preaching his version of Christianity around his village. I'm sure people loved that. That no. must have been real no, chill. No, not initially. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't imagine they did. His neighbors were not all too pleased with this sudden and rash change in Hong. Can you imagine, like, real quick, can you imagine if I was like, yo, I had this dream, and I saw, like, L. Ron Hubbard, <laughs> and he was beating the shit out of Jesus, and I just started going around town tearing down crosses? Yeah, I wouldn't go, I mean, you'd just get shot after this. I, I would get killed immediately. Yeah. yeah. He went from a respectable teacher who tutored their kids to a religious lunatic overnight smashing educational tablets and toppling religious statues. He was banned from teaching in his village immediately. That's yeah, that's a good reason to fire a teacher. Yeah. No, I, I don't think so. Toppling religious things? No, fuck that. Not in America. You can do that all day. You actually can't. Just go destroy private property, aren't you? Are you kidding me? No, nah, man. No, nah, man. Someone just tosses a brick through a fucking mosque, and they're like, hey, whoa, dude, whoa, 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 whoa. Not mosques, dude. <laughs> just churches. <laughs> just churches, man. We don't do anything about it. I'm like, well, I mean, what's the what's your, their side of the story? That's No, I can't. It's what you get when you're in charge. We'll get ours. Hong went on preaching. <laughs> like you haven't. <laughs> what's the Vatican worth? Uh, Probably like a trillion dollars. It's over. It's... It's immeasurable. Yeah. There is no value number. Well, Hong went on preaching, uh, didn't really have much success at first, but kind of hit the countryside and talked to his fellow people, the Hakka, and amassed a bit of a following, including most of his family who now believed he was the son of God. How? Those are the last people you should be able to talk into that. Your family? Yeah. No, they should be talking you out of it constantly. Y- yeah. Y- like, if, if, if I just showed up and was like, hey, mom and dad, so I'm the son of God. God, they'd be like, I know you're not. You're my son. <laughs> yeah, I saw you come out, and B, I've, I know you better than you know yourself in many ways. I can assure you, you're just a narcissist. You fucking psycho. Once they went to rural China, his homie Fang Yongshan kind of took his preaching and made it a legit religion with what he called the God Worshippers Society. Oh, that's a good name. 
<laughs> it's fucking aces. <laughs> and the two put together their own version of the Bible. Always good to just kind of you got to make it your own, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're redo if you're remaking a story like Greta Gerwig's Little Women, you know, she didn't go linear. She did dual timelines. You got to make it your own. Yeah, yeah, you got to you got to put your own spin on it. Yeah, I, I think if you gave the three of us an eight ball of cocaine and like a handle of whiskey, we could write our own doctrine pretty quickly. Write our own yeah. Bible, but the thing is, you just take the IP and all the shit that's already there. Yeah, and just reweave it. We yeah. would just rip off the Unabomber's manifesto. It would be like the Unabomber's Manifesto, the Gnostic Bible, and then mm-hmm. like uh, Timothy Dexter's fucking biography. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Hong's version of this Bible rejected the Christian message of forgiveness. Metal. Smart. Good. And he gave more merit to his own divinity over his brother Jesus. Uh, even better. Well. He's like the new Pope. Where's Jesus? People flock to join this movement. Not necessarily because they believed in Hong or were overly religious. No, they simply enjoyed his anti-government rhetoric that went along with his preaching, which was big on the end of private property and social classes. Oh, so a precursor to what's to come. Yeah, you starting to pick up on it? You starting to pick up why he's responsible for so many deaths? Oh, he's the godfather of... The ideology. We'll get to it. Okay. No, I... Okay. I'm really interested. He even initially gets backed by Karl Marx. Oh, no. So, wait. He's alive at the same time. Yeah. Oh, man. You know how we're always like, Karl Marx just wrote a book. We might be... Might be wrong on that. Might be right on... mm, Yeah, we might have to amend that take. (laughs) Under the Qing dynasty, life in rural China was tough sledding. Hong was able to captivate the audience with talks of an uprising and cleaning out the demons that infested their country's highest positions of power. I don't want to. I don't want to put that on the dynasty. I don't. I can't particularly recall a time when life in rural China was peachy. No. I no. Think, I don't think that's one dynasty's fault, dude. Also, communism didn't help it. It's they weird. go out and kill some sparrows, and then you just starve to death for some reason. Yeah, that's that was after. I know, I know, but I'm just saying, like, it's, it's, it's a lot of shooting yourself in the feet. Yeah. Yeah. What Hong started as a religious endeavor quickly pivoted to a social revolution, and much of his following got together, living in compounds and communes. The Qing dynasty began to take notice of this. Of course they did. And wanted to nip this in the bud before it got real traction. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Oh, the people that are gaining followers that are calling you literal demons? Yeah, maybe stop that. You would think this is smart, but perhaps this was the gasoline. Well, it, it goes on one of two ways, right? Either it works or... You made a martyr. You made it a hundred times worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you come for the cult leader, you best not miss. In you 1850, be- a famine was bucking in the providence of Guangxi. When wasn't it? <laughs> and drove much of the community to join Hong's movement. It's just like famine in China go together what does not a famine look like i i swear to god <laughs> yeah dude. because like think about that too like how often reading about in the history of the united states do you hear about like famine in the midwest once that the i can think Bowl. of that's the only it's time it Rick, Rick's it, so in awesome. china it's like every 15 years there's a fucking famine in your in le- at least in medieval europe even up to the 1700s in the little ice age there's famine and stuff you. This is probably why America's like OP is because you never hear about it. And then there's one that we're kind of like, oh yeah, I heard that was bad. And then meanwhile in China, there's like a minor famine and 20 million people die. Yeah, no, I mean that's pretty much it, right? Like we also just have one of the most fertile countries on earth. USA. <laughs> yeah. USA. For now. For now. Yeah. For now. Qing soldiers entered and threatened to kill any converts. In response to this threat, Hong declared his own dynasty. The Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. Sick. Good name. Hong organized and put together his own army of about 30,000 men initially, tied red cloths around their head, and declared war on the government forces. Red cloths, huh? That's so impressive. An initial army of 30,000? That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a fuck ton. That's the size of my university. So he would also take women. They let women fight. Bodies, dude. Yeah, bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Hong organized and put together this army, 
and in January 1851, their first clash with the Qing force of 7,000 men began. They had 30 versus 7? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Also, I kind of think when your army is just like probably semi to very untrained, it doesn't really matter if it's a dude or a chick. If you're going against professional soldiers... Yeah, I mean, when you're that outnumbered, obviously they're professional soldiers, but there has to be some sort of element of like, oh, they don't know what they're doing, so we can't adequately respond the way we want. They also don't show up all 30,000 men at first. Okay. Oh, okay. But so I mean, Hong, at this point, in this battle, gets surrounded. And uh, it almost seems like it could end right there. However, reinforcements show up. A little Battle of the Bastards situation. Yeah. <laughs> and they win the battle. Bang. He gets his first dub. That's one for one. That's impressive. Honestly. It is really impressive. That's, to do that with a... So, to give some perspective on that, you remember we talked about in the episode I did in La, La Malinche, or however it was, it's actually supposed to be pronounced? La, uh, anyway, the Spanish were fucking uh, winning battles against, like, professional or at least semi-pro Indian soldiers, you know, outnumbered 10 to 1. The fact that like a, a professional army of 7,000 should definitely beat a non-professional army of double or even triple that size, in my opinion. That's still a lot of work, though. Like, the amount of work you have. Like, it's not easy to do it. Maybe it double, but triple? These or? were also hard people. They were peasants, Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure, yeah, actually, they farmers. were... Farmers. Yeah. They were probably, like, veterans amongst them and stuff like that, too. You would have yeah. to think. It's, there, there's People someone with scripted some. into armies. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah, someone yeah. that has some sort of experience there. After this, several more days of fighting ensued, and the Taiping scored a major victory after faking a retreat into an ambush of the Qing soldiers that followed after. That's fucking incredible. Bang. Yeah. Hong claimed victory in this battle and left over 1,000 soldiers dead. After this conflict, Hong and the Taipings went from city to city, building their army and bringing on new converts. So every city they would kind of conquer, even if you know there was no Qing soldiers there, they would just kind of take over and then be like, hey, join the army. Or yeah. die. I was going to say, uh, was it that friendly? wasn't friendly. Join yeah, or die, yeah, yeah. yeah. But most people were kind of on board initially. Yeah, like, like fuck he's the pretty government. cool. Yeah, it was mostly, yeah, fuck the government. I can't imagine, yeah, like the, the overthrow of these towns was like, Hyper violent all the time. It's probably no, like, oh, there's a lot of. I mean, yeah, we hate this shit too. We hate this shit too, man. Yeah, let's do it. Men and women signed up for this new vision of China and were ready to die for it. By 1853, his army was approaching close to a million soldiers. That's fucking insane. How much radicalization throughout history do you think can be attributed to the boredom of the masses? Like, I'm thinking about this, right? Like, he's rolling into these, like, probably, you know, rural or even just, like, you know, feudal-type towns where these people have whatever lives that aren't very interesting. He's like, hey, do you want to change the fucking world? Like, how much do you think it is out of boredom for some people? I think you need both boredom and discomfort. Well, yeah, discomfort for sure. But, like, I mean... Because in America, everyone's very bored. All the but time. Everyone's also very comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. But, I mean, I, hey, like, people get radicalized here all the time. Like, yeah, but very few of them do anything. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an incredibly small amount of people that do. Yeah. But still, like, I got to think it's people that are like, my life's bored. Here especially, it's boredom. The boredom helps, for sure. Yeah. But it, a lot of them, they have discomfort issues, right? They're basically mental I'm health issues. I'm not getting issues. laid. I'm not getting laid. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. Most people can definitely get radicalized to the point, you know, where they'll post some really gnarly, uh, just fucked up shit, whatever side of the political spectrum, but they won't really... No, that's their outlet. Is that the is the... Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, for sure. It doesn't go beyond that. Maybe they go to a protest. I honestly think, like, a lot of it in America is just, like, I'm not getting paid, I'm not getting laid. That's honestly the crux of a lot of radicalization. Yeah. Yeah. Hong decided to go into attack mode. March 6th. Oh, he wasn't in there? 1853, a force <laughs> yeah, right. of 750,000 Taipings laid siege to Nanjing. Holy fuck. So, where 80,000 Qing soldiers held on for 13 days before eventually being overrun. That's incredible, yeah. too. 750,000. They had walls and everything. Yeah. Still. But I mean, got, still got to lay siege. 10 to 1, though. Yeah. 
I mean, it was more so the CG. Once they get in, yeah, it's, it's over. over. Yeah. You know how they get in? How they get in? Hong soldiers dug tunnels and disguised as Buddhist monks to place explosives and set fires all around the city walls. Dude, we need this to be a movie. Like, I don't understand how it's but not. I want to give some perspective on China this. China doesn't. He laid siege with 750,000 men. Mm-hmm. In 1864, the Union Army was the largest army in the world. It had 533,000 men across all fronts. <laughs> so these guys had a quarter of a million more. Yeah. That's insane. That's insane. I'm going to give you more impressive stats at the end. Okay. Okay. Two of the bombs went off as planned, but one was delayed and accidentally killed a decent amount of Hong's own soldiers. Doesn't well, matter. We got 750. Exactly. They're going to go meet his dad. Yeah. Despite the minor speed bump, <laughs> the Taipings unleashed their assault, and the city quickly fell shortly after. Yeah, how many people did he even kill? He's got 750,000. Yeah. They're like, sir, 20,000 men are dead. They're like, all right. All right. That's, yeah. well. Nanjing became the new capital of the Heavenly Kingdom. Hong then planned two more offensives, the northern and western expeditions, to eventually form a pincer move and surround the majority of China. Damn, like whole country pincer. He was a pretty smart dude. Yeah. I mean, definitely, there were people that were helping him, I have to imagine. All he had to do was pass a goddamn exam. One. never happens. That's why I just, if your kids need help on the test, cheat for them. Just don't teach. Cheat. Yes, I agree with that. Get your funding. Initially, the northern expedition planned on taking Beijing, but audibled to Tanjing. This was a critical error. Tanjing held its own and slowed down Hong and his forces to give Beijing enough time to beef up their reinforcements. So the northern expedition fails and is is called back. The western expedition, however, fares much better. Multiple cities are taken, tens of thousands of Qing soldiers are murked, and new recruits grow exponentially in these new territories. Did it say why they didn't, and it's fine if you don't have it, why they didn't hit Shanghai, which is like just to the east of they, they Nanjing? Get to, they get to Shanghai. Oh, the, they, didn't wanna, get, they didn't want to go right away? Not here. Okay. They get to Shanghai eventually. You got a blitz. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of got a little greedy here. They're like, yeah, we'll take the city too. Where hey, is We can take anything. Where is Nanjing? Nanjing? Nanjing. It's yeah. just to the west of Shanghai. Oh, Okay. I'm just trying to look and this a little bit and a fair bit fair bit south of Beijing. I just looked it on a map. I'm not recalling this from memory. Um, now they have a lot of success off the bat because the Qing Dynasty was spread thin. Not only were the Taipings in open rebellion, but there were other inner conflicts with smaller warlords, and you know this little called nation, England. Mm, yeah, England and France kind of wreaked havoc during the Opium Wars. Everyone's kind of getting their little fingers in. It was the perfect storm for Taiping success. After these offenses, Hong took a step back from his military duties. He gave full power to his generals. And you know what? You got to start reaping those rewards. Yeah. What What year is this, by the way? What are we in now? Right now, we're about 1853, 1854. Okay. I mean, this is like a crazy time. In human history, you have the U.S. just doubled in size. Yeah, the French are all over the place right now. They keep having revolutions. Yeah. The Crimean War, 1853, I think the Crimean War is literally about to start or is happening. Like, this is just like, this makes what the current geopolitical situation seem fucking quaint. Honestly, I mean, yeah, we're having some proxy wars right now. Yeah, an That's army of almost a million ravaging through China. Again, so there's like a superpower growing in, in on a continent that was only discovered 300 years ago. Yeah, like it's fast. I, it's fucking crazy. Now, what did Hong do during his days in power when he no longer served the military? Well, he was in his palace with a few dozen women. He would keep around in his personal chambers, which was kind of funny because in the Taiping Christianity, it was forbidden to participate in sexual activities, including husbands and wives. How do you make more? You just conquer. Uh, okay. You just go find more. Eventually, you run out. Eh. I don't think he's worried about it. Not not yeah. in his time. Yeah. He's That's like, a, once I die, who cares? It's a yeah. tomorrow problem. Yeah. 
everything's a tomorrow problem when you're a narcissist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or someone else's. Yeah. So he lives by the do as I say, don't as I do philosophy. Oh, of course. Yeah. This becomes a pretty major dividing line within, as Hong and one of his most influential, powerful generals, Yang Yu Xing, uh, kind of gets upset about it. He's like, hey, man, I thought this was... He's like the one true believer. Yeah. He's not, um, but Hong personally kicks out one of Yang's ladies out of his bed, and that didn't really sit well with Yang. Wait, wait, Han kicked one of Yang's ladies out of Han's bed? Out of Yang's bed. So wait, oh, Yang... He made, he made one of Yang's... He went leave. to Yang, he saw Yang was with a woman, he's like, you gotta go. And then he went back and kept fucking. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he kept fucking women, and he kept making his generals be abstinent. So he's yeah. cucking everybody. A little bit. Yeah. Starting to uh, buy his own hype a little too much. Yeah, he's heat checking. This became the dividing line, and uh, Yang would openly criticize the leadership of Hong. Had his own power inside, started military campaigns on his own, even had his own visions where he claimed to be the voice of God. Oh, oh he was like, hey, you know what? And he started Your calling, dad called. <laughs> started calling Hong a false prophet. Oh, Sick. how'd this go? Not well. For Yang? <laughs> Not well for Yang. I can't imagine. Hong finally snapped with the insubordination and ordered the rest of the generals back to Nanjing. And they assassinated Yang in the most visible way possible and killed his family and anyone in his bloodline in very public fashion. Man, they were really big on that in the East. The whole, uh, your entire bloodline is gone. Yeah, they did that a lot. Not only that, he then executed all of Yang's soldiers. Ooh. Like, hey man, I it's about twenty thousand people, okay. uh, in the in the streets. That's so fucked. That Just was like a unit for him. Yeah, seriously, that would be a platoon in an American army. Yeah. Did it slowly too. Did it over two months. Oh, no one was catching wind of this. Were they all in, in prison? Basically, all of Yang's men were just in prison. And okay, yeah, they, they they trapped them, imprisoned them, executed them, slowly, just to make a point. Jeez. All right. And the general that was in charge of this was actually executed, too. Wait, really? <laughs> the roundup crew guy? Got general Wei, yeah. He had, he, had to, he had to clean his hands. He's like, all right, you got to go, too. You just, you just massacred our men. I know I ordered you to, yeah. but now you have Is to that, die, too. Can't have you hanging around. Is that like a weird consolation for anyone left that's like maybe mad at the situation? Yeah, I don't think so. General Way, I don't believe, was super excited to kill his own guys. No, I can't imagine he was. Yeah. So he gets taken out by his own bodyguard. Oh. Although some armies were fine with it. You know, the Romans did decimation. Yeah. If you didn't perform well, one out of ten. This was a catastrophic mistake. It became obvious that he was no longer a freedom fighting group. Or this utopia they promised. It was, in fact, a brutal dictatorship run by an insane, paranoid leader huh. who would do anything to maintain power. Who could have seen that coming? Meet the wow. new boss. Someone seeking power was insane. But, yeah. but uh, real communism's never been tried. Real communism has never been tried. Never been tried. The problem is that when they try it, right, everyone, this always happens. Uh, human. Uh, I saw someone said something like, to the extent of the problem with, like, progressivism is a deep and fundamental misunderstanding of human nature right and it's like it's not wrong like That's exactly yeah. right yeah like you can't just have the reason governments are piecemealed together is because human nature is hard to fucking get a grip on yeah so Com you have to use a bunch of different tools and like communism works until you introduce people into it yeah every government does right every government in its purest form kind of forgets that like, right. Yeah. Then you try to put it in practice. It's like, oh man, some people just don't want to work, so we're gonna need some sort of safety net here, or they get hurt, or like, oh god, like these people, there's just maniacs. Right. So we gotta have a prison system in place, and it, it's yeah. like, communism is kind of like being like, <laughs> it's kind of like a team, a mediocre team going into a football game and being like, all we gotta do is complete every pass. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> like, it's just the, gotta hit shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we are a hundred percent from the three. Yeah, we will win. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, no shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> coaches say that, and sometimes it makes sense though. You just gotta make shots. 
Just no, no. Make, it's just you just got to make all the shots. It's even more so, like in a in a more realistic way. It's trust the fundamentals. It's hey, if you stick to your fundamentals, you will win regardless of talent. No one says that past sixth grade. Bad coaches do. That's not true. I, I watch all the Mizzou hype videos, and Eli Drinkwitz is like, "I just need you to do the small things. Just need you to do small things. We're gonna win." I trust coach. May eighteen sixty. This is where things, you know, slowly but surely start to go wrong. They do have some minor success. Um, the last seven years, the Qing troops have been trying to lay siege to Nanjing. They ultimately kind of shoot them away. Uh, just they're like hit and run operations. This is such like a comical game of total war where you lose like a big province and, you, and it's just like a full stack of rebels and you're just like, God, fuck. And you keep sending armies, but you don't have enough people because you got a hundred things going on. It's San Andreas. The fucking ballers are attacking your yeah. territory. Yeah. Yeah. You just got all the territory except like, for one. Now there's nine. You're gonna drive fire. all the way across yeah. San Andreas. Yeah. It's yeah. Just it's like, will this ever end? No. No. God damn it! Just su- <laughs> surrender. Hong took a little bit of this momentum, captured two of the wealthiest provinces of the Qing Dynasty. However, this was around the same time. Qing Dynasty signed a truce with British and French troops and could now put all their resources towards Hong and the kingdom. Oh, so, question, because this is an interesting sort of time in China. Uh, obviously, all the European armies are like fully gunpowder, right? Like since well before this time period, right? Full every infantryman gunpowder, maybe cavalry's kind of combined mm-hmm. arms. Mm-hmm. What is the Guess weapon? Guess what comes with the truce? Guns for the Qing. Artillery. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm guessing that Hong's army is uh, maybe a little bit of firearm, old firearm situation, but a lot of uh, edge weapons and the Guess like. who immediately upgrades? The Qing dynasty. Yeah. Sick. Guess who now has French and British and even American troops and mercenaries? The Qing dynasty. Hell yeah! We've had people fight in mainland China. Yeah, the Boxer Rebellion, we had a mar- there were several Marines. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Also, there was. in terms of fighting in mainland China, World War II, we were in all over China. there. Yeah, you're right. No, I mean, yeah. I guess, like, for a Chinese domestic issue, mm-hmm. not like a world war. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, but no, you're right. The Boxer Rebellion, we did. I forgot about that. Taipings were a little disheartened by this news. This whole time, they were trying to get the international community on their side. How? <laughs> I'm God. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't usually play everywhere just else. Go to <laughs> I mentioned Karl Marx earlier, who supported the movement initially, but publicly came out against it once he started to dig into what they were about. You know what? Like, That's, oh, no, they're insane. That is actually... Karl Marx called them insane. Yeah. So on brand for everyone who loves Karl Marx, he hears that there's some just like anti-person who's in power movement doesn't really dig in beyond that says hell yeah they're the good guys yeah. and then later they find out a little bit more after horrible things have happened and they're like well it's complicated i don't think i support them but let's not forget it started well those and those other guys are bad yeah, yeah, too yeah. so there's no good guys and i was only a little bit wrong no you caught a sound bite it confirmed your bias and you bought in yep yeah that's it Man, fuck Karl Marx. <laughs> God yeah. damn it. Yeah. I mean, we weren't like huge fans in no, the we first place. We weren't, but no. we were kind of like, what do you really what do you really do? Like I still am of, of the opinion that Oh, like, I don't think he I caused really, everything. He didn't like, really do he personally didn't really do again. At some point, if you're putting bodies at the feet of Karl Marx, you need to put bodies at the feet of Jesus and Christianity. I'm fine with both. I'm sure you he are. used <laughs> both. Yeah. Now, this guy, he really did co opt both yep. Christianity and communism. Which don't. King. They are not compatible. Actually. Somehow managed that's to not do true. it. No. You can, you can put. First off, you can jam anything into anything. Oh, well, yes, you can with cognitive dissonance. But, like, what I'm saying is, like, communism is, like, not about any sort of hierarchical thing. It's not even about heavenly hierarchy, it's just the people. I guess it would be more like commun- communalism if you wanted to do Christianity socialism, right? Like it's like nothing matters here, so we all share because we're trying to get to heaven. We're all equal in the eyes of God. It's an easy thing to easily 
smashed together. And then, but I then agree. it becomes a sort of like socialist situation where it's like the people own the means and all that stuff. Well, socialism is just a step to communism, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, but communism is complete lack of power structure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Except not at all. No. Well, <laughs> weird how people need that since they've been fucking around like right. we're social animals social animals create hierarchies to understand their social settings like it's how we fucking operate realizing they were an owl out realizing they were now outgunned the taipings tried to adapt with more guerrilla style hit and run attacks and they go after shanghai this battle lasts over a year a siege or are they just like kind of fucking with it both okay well no what they but can't can't the Qing dynasty prevails. Okay. Yeah. I'm rooting for the Qing. The Qing then retook the coastal city of An Qing, thanks to British blockade and siege that went on so long that the Taipings and locals resulted to cannibalism to survive. Even the town's markets were starting to sell human meat. Cool. That human meat, hell. There's <laughs> actually a, I don't have a picture from this one, but I'll have to look it up. I'll show you guys at some point. There's a picture of like a Russian famine situation in... It might have been 1919, 1920. It's just a family standing in front of human body parts. Isn't that in, like, Stalingrad? No, it was It was pre-World War II, but post-revolution. Oh. Oh, I think yeah. it was just one of the, you know... I've seen that picture where it's a it's a meat market and it's arms or something it's like that. It's like arms and legs yeah. and shit. It's pretty gnarly. More battles happen in smaller cities, and by that I mean hundreds of thousands of people yeah. were still involved, and in total, about 600 towns were wiped off the mat to complete ash. To give perspective today, and this still, I think, is the case back then to an extent, China's got like 20 cities the size of Chicago. Yeah. They had more. They're gone now. <laughs> I was about to say, like, but uh, like it's al- also perspective, 600 towns is probably about the size of, I mean, that's an entire state. Like, Some imagine states. just, just uh, imagine you just eradicated Florida. Like, I don't know about Florida, but like Florida's got eight hundred or so. Towns. Listen, you oh. think the global oh, emissions yeah. that China puts out now are bad? If this man doesn't exist, twenty times worse. So he's green, yeah. Actually, he's actually changing my mind. Well, on wait, we already said that, right? His Genghis. carbon footprint is. I mean, it beats Jangus. Massive death is green. Yes, genocide is green. Mm. No, it has to be in the, well, genocide. Mm. Uh. Genocide not doesn't have to be ethnic or anything. It can just be people. Yeah, genocide well, no. does not have to be racist what is, what or speci- sexist or anything. What is species? No, it kind of does actually. It has to be a specific group of people you're eliminating. Does it? I believe Geno. so. Yeah. Okay. Geno. So what would just be killing a, a species uh, <laughs> or uh, like? No, not even a species. Just like I want to kill fifty million people, but of all races. I mean, what would that be? I mean. Just mass murder, mass homicide, murder. but like I, I, homicides. Like I, I don't. It's not ethnic cleansing, so maybe genocide does fit. But I think genocide is. There has to be an ethnicity. Okay. Link to it. I'm not sure. I'm gonna look it up. Who could say? There's no way to look it up. There's no way to know. Qin commander <laughs> Zhang Guofan went on a bit of a redemption tour after initially sucking in battle early in the war. And he was feeling himself. He started burning down everything in his path during his campaign in the countryside. Kind of did his own little Sherman. Okay. Hell yeah. Hong himself never adjusted. He just kept saying God would do his work for him. Yeah. That's, uh, that only gets so far. Uh, it has to be either a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Okay. That you're eliminating. Okay. So if you're just... If it was like... All right. So it's a, it is a genocide because it is a... Yeah, I guess so, group. because it is a religious group, yeah. Or a dynastic group, mm-hmm. too. A yeah. national group. They like It's a national group. It is a national group, so it would be a genocide. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Most of Hong's generals bailed and turned themselves into the Qing dynasty either to save their own lives or the lives of their men or try to work out a deal. One of the generals, Shi Da Qi, tried to negotiate a deal but was executed by slowly being sliced apart a.k.a. death by a thousand cuts, and 2,000 of his men were slaughtered along his side. Not ideal. By the way, that means Genghis Khan did not commit genocide. Or he committed like a hundred genocides. <laughs> Everybody could get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The world was his genocide. But he wasn't doing it 
because they were that way. He right, took, right, right, right. Yeah. He took Baghdad it, off so the So genocide map. requires intent in a way. It does. It has to be intentional toward he one just group of yeah. people. Yeah. Right. Based on those parameters. But yeah, like, so if you want it, you're like, I need to kill 50 million people. You didn't care how or who they were, or whatever. And they all just happen to be the same. It, like, that doesn't count. It doesn't count because the intention isn't through like that sort of. Right. It's just mass murder. Right. Yeah. 1864, the Qing essentially had complete control of China again, other than Nanjing. It was time for the final siege and to root out Hong from the capital of the Taipings. During the siege, Hong was like, God will take care of us. He We're will, good. He will provide us manna. Although he had a bit of a mistranslation of manna. Did you think manna was Gatling gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. He thought manna was weeds. Weeds? What is? How would that be better? He didn't think it was bread. How How would that be better for him? Like to just stop them because the weeds are so I think, thick. I think bread and weeds are a wash Mm-mm. for his siege. Mm-mm. It's really bad. It's a really bad mistranslation because uh, he sees some weeds growing, eats them with some berries that were super poisonous, and he gets deathly ill. <laughs> he pulls yes. the fucking into the wild. Yeah. Hell yeah. What a way to go. What a story. He's like, hey, look, it's coming out of the fucking dirt. Oh, what, weeds? <laughs> the things that always have? Manna. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that pamphlet sitting under his pillow See, or whatever. Is, you know, it used to be that crazy loners could somehow whip up a whole nation and go go off and conquer shit. Hitler, Hong, whatever. Now... Our crazy loners are sh- so shunned. Society's working properly, so they just wander off to a bus in Alaska, eat some weird shit, and die. Yeah, he dies. From that? He dies from the weeds. G- I mean, No bad. He needed to go worse than that. And he hands off the power to his 15-year-old son. Oh, no. Can't imagine that lasted long or ended well. Nope, because the chings broke through and the slaughter was on. <laughs> when the dust settled, a low estimate... Of this war was about 20 to 30 million people. Oh, my God. Uh, Over me. 14 years. You promised not, nine not done. figs. Not done yet. Okay. Every leader of the Taipings was hunted down and brutally executed. Hong himself was exhumed, defiled, beheaded. That means fucked. Cremated. And then he had his ashes blown out of a cannon. <laughs> I would have just. You got to dump him in, a, in an outhouse. Yeah. And here is why I think he is responsible for nine figures. Okay. Though the Taiping's revolt failed, they are often idolized and credited by Mao Zedong. Okay. Oh. And he credits them for laying the groundwork of the CCP. Laying a blueprint. Yeah. He got all of his motivation and all of his just kind of ideas from Hong. So I count I count Mal's numbers with him. Uh, yeah, if you do that, then it's a fuck ton of numbers, man. Um, it should be noted, by the way. So how many people died in that war without the Mal shit? Twenty low estimates, thirty million, 30 like million. twenty to thirty million. Some, e- I mean, there, I saw numbers as high as hundred million. Okay, well, let's say let's call it forty million. Let's call it forty. Or you said twenty to thirty. We'll call it thirty. That's yeah, fine. we'll say thirty. Thirty's fine. World War II was between 50 and 85 million. So this thing you've It also nev- ki- more than World War I. Yeah, this thing you've never heard of. Never heard of. Or maybe heard it, but you didn't know what it was. Yeah. Killed almost as many people as World War II. Killed more than World War I. More people than World War I. And you're Way not, more than Civil you're War. You're not learning it. <laughs> oh, my God. You're not learning that shit in high school. Like, like no. Yeah. I mean, you might have if you were like AP World or some shit. They probably only they might teach it in China actually, because he is kind of the, the no, you're godfather gonna, of communism. You're gonna gas them. up whatever, yeah, lends credence to you. Yeah, yeah. So that is the Taiping Revolution. That is our man Hong. Our man, your man. None of our men. Uh, None of our men. Yeah, Hong Shi Quan. Maybe he was Catholic, but. Yeah, he was Protestant. But he ain't. Protestant based. So next time you see your Protestant friend, tell them how many deaths. Tell them how much blood's yeah, on Yeah, when they whine about the Crusades. <laughs> tell them what fucking hong. <laughs> What'd you guys learn today? Oh, so much about the Taiping Rebellion. Um, 
I guess I didn't realize that the Taiping Rebellion had this element of insane religious hallucination to it. I knew it was like a rebellion against a dynastic group. Right. Then, but, you know, I, I didn't. I am very, you know, Eurocentric. We all are because we are in basically a, a European founded nation. We are white. Um, and yeah, we're all fucking European. Um, so, you know, I don't know a ton about Chinese history. And so when you hear about, I do know, though, that there are like war after war of just obscene death tolls because there's just so many. China's always been so populated. And it is part of me. It's just like, I don't know what happened. Somebody got their Jimmy's rustled about something and then a fucking 20 million people died. That's kind of yeah. what I think about any war in China, basically it's prior a, to <laughs> after a certain number. It just it's like a vase crack. It's all the same. So, right. Mm, and it's not because I don't care. Or I don't think it's interesting because it's fascinating, but it's just not my history. Uh but it is so. It, it is it's also hard to comprehend. It is interesting it's, to learn. The that's just random as fuck too. Eighteen fifties. Eighteen fifties. Very modern. Yeah. Christian, <clears throat> sort of, but not really. Co opted. He was Jesus's brother. Yeah. Yeah. That's co opted Christianity, like with Karl yeah. Marx. Yeah. He somehow mashed the two together. Yeah. I think Karl Marx has heard about it and was like, "Yeah, people are doing stuff." And then, re- and then like read a little more and was like, "Oh, so Carl, no. Karl Marx Fuck was Karl Marx." I learned that Karl Marx is just like everyone who loves Karl Marx. Yeah, get out. <laughs> Which, right. by the way, makes sense. It's just pseudo intellectuals, right? Yeah. Well, I guarantee you, the way Karl Marx found out about it was he was having cocktails with some other person that mentally masturbates all day. And like, did you hear the Taiping yeah. Rebellion? They're getting rid of classes. And he's like, "That's amazing." Putting my stamp on that. Yeah, yeah, no private property anymore. Yeah. Perfect. That's what we're going for here. And, well, Karl Marx wasn't really going for anything. That's just what he thought was going to happen. Maybe he was. I don't know. But I, I'm i not going to reread the book. But Hung really lost the plot, though, by not letting anybody fuck besides him. If he would have not done that, it would have been over. Do you know why the Mongolians did so well, the Romans did so well, probably a lot of Chinese dynasties did so well? They pillaged and raped. They let everyone fuck. That and also, I mean, like, mm, you know, I think the Romans, as much as they pillaged and shit too, if you're willing to bend the knee, all right, you're ours. You're just, we're just gonna tax you. And yeah. I guess Hong yeah. was wasn't about a long time. It was about a good time because <laughs> he wouldn't it make sense, like you said, to have children. Yeah, like wives and husbands couldn't have sex. Narcissism. The foresight of nor- narcissism is as far as your nose. Like yeah. that's uh, that's as far as it goes, man. Like. You see this far away, it's the moment, not the plan. So be narcissistic. Live in the moment. Who's Hitler? I don't know. It might have been the easiest Hongler. one we've ever done. He fucking Hongler. <laughs> yeah. Should we now call the segment Who's Hong? <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit. It, just a little. Just for today. Hitler's kind of a smack in the face to Hong when we should really cry. Uh, no, Hitler killed more people than Hong. Dan says hundred million. Well, World War Two. Yeah. First off, he's he's adding names, which fair, fair. Mm. But if we go by the thirty, World War Two was that was a low estimate. Thir- Again, they they said they have numbers for this specific fourteen year period up to a hundred million. Okay. It could Listen, I'm not seeing Hitler's absolved of anything. H- Hitler. You also have to combine Hitler with Stalin. Like this, they're both responsible. Eh, no, Forget I'm gonna blame about. the guy who started the war, even though Stalin's a piece of shit. Those are separate things, too. Like, communism didn't evolve as a response to Nazism, like, in Russia. Yeah, it was already that, there. Th- yeah, that's so I can't call Stalin's deaths tied to Hitler's, like... Yeah. I mean, are you saying... Like, oh, you're saying, like, in World War II, of total, you have to contribute. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Also, Bye. what is the CCP doing right now? Nothing cool. Nothing cool. Ask the Uyghurs. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm adding those bodies to Hong too. Everybody's Hong, <laughs> every everything from Hong to Mao and on is Hong. Uh, he inspired Mao, and Mao inspired this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's that's all I got today. It's good. I I didn't know much about this man before I I researched. It's kind of crazy. How'd he you get, even find him? He doesn't get any fucking play. Do you just Google? <sighs> crazy Chinese leaders. You go down like Reddit holes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reddit holes are good. Reddit hole is good. Um, you know, I I think it is fun. These kind of episodes are really great too because you know it's easy for us to kind of fall into the European influence history, 
But when we yeah. get into like Africa and Asian history and stuff like that, it gets really fun because it's like shit. This is significant, and yeah. you've and never heard. Yeah, of it. there's just a lot with with Asian in particular because yeah, I even count a lot. I feel like a lot of people kind of wouldn't, but like annoying people wouldn't. But really though, if you look at how Western history is taught, it starts at the Fertile Crescent with the Sumerians. So even that stuff in ancient Egypt, we learn a bunch about ancient Egypt. Even that stuff is kind of Western history. Like we kind of claim it. Who went this way? Who went that way? Right, right, right. And like China just gets kind of left out. India too. uh, Oh, definitely. But I don't want to know anything about India. Yeah, yeah, I know you hate India. I I just don't like India. India scares them. It really does. I don't. I I see those uh, videos of the trains. It's just like I claustrophobic. I can't do that. There's people (laughs) on top of the trains. You gotta go, man. More on top of the trains. Then on the train. They're also very handsy. I don't like that. They hold hands. Yeah. No, no. No, they like, I'm saying like handsy. They like molest you. I know, but also the men hold hands as a sign of affection. That's fine. Well, that's, that's in fucking Portugal. You can see that. That's not true. Yeah, you can. I saw not a one eh. group of friends holding hands in Portugal. There's there's some Hispanic Slash. I, I had a fraternity brother who was Indian, and he still had family in India, and he's, he was like, yeah, I go back there uh, every couple of years. <laughs> and he's like, I was walking around the city with my cousin, like male cousin, and he just tried to hold my hand. Because they just do that. They just walk, like guys just walk around holding hands there. And he was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Weirdo. Brother? <laughs> he was like, what? We did this. He's like, I mean, there's I a lot of people. You might get lost. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah. yeah like, well, at some point, you get into the wrong market. I'm like, hold my hand. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Please. I'm like my own toddler. I'm like, what? <laughs> Dad, yeah, Dad. you you put me in fucking like New Delhi in a fucking wet market. <laughs> I'm like, dude, just show me where to go. Don't let me go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Make sure to leave a five star review, please, and thank you all on Spotify and Apple. Rob, if you could pull up some reviews on Apple. Yeah, I got your. And I really like the review. I actually posted my Instagram. I think that's where we. Well, start. it was a nice one. It was very nice, but it was also long and detailed. It was. He was a good dude. Um. So let's this, give him a shine. Uh, first off, we got. I just want Delco to drink again from ID Craig eighty one. Honestly, pro- probably my Dan. my favorite show on the network. Enough that I watch the YouTube videos and listen to the episodes on here. Keep up the banner and the laughs. Uh, Red, white, and John said uh, bread of the sandwich variety. Don't know what that means. Uh, it's about me, man. Yeah, and then here's your uh, your one that you love, or it could be a deep cut about uh, how I used to eat bread sandwiches. Oh, oh it, is. it is that yeah. is yeah. for you that is but right. yeah sean bry said love the podcast totally found it because of hardcore history which i always love by the way i love when people accidentally find us because of the name the connection you. yeah our uh was our stepdad yeah claim and carlin uh initially thought you guys were morons but funny and eventually realized it's actually a combination of good writing and absolutely winging it first time and willing to pay to play and don't regret subscribing to the patreon episodes uh, regular bonus content alone. Where thick game shows voicemails are gold. Listen to Rob whine enough to let him stay and risk to make a comeback makes him the king queen question mark of power bottoming. <laughs> yeah, power I power bottomed that win. Unfortunately the podcast is so good I listened to both the entire main and Patreon in six months, alerting my personality, uh altering my personality enough my mores changed and I got three complaints from HR and was fired. Just kidding, but keep the good work boys uh boys. You know what, Sean? Honestly, hit us with a DM on patreon and i'll send you some we'll get you some, some merch merch that's a very yeah. s- like sick review and then everybody else softcorehistory.com for merch please and thank you i mean um if you join the patreon you get a discount too so uh i also like this this one silly history podcast exclamation point from ah ha 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 uh i've listened to the entire back catalog recommend this podcast to all my friends they tell fun history stories in a lighthearted, goofy way to keep you interested this is my all-time favorite podcast, and I gotta love someone from St. Louis like me. What up? That's why you read it. Uh, I didn't even. I've not read this before. I didn't know this was here. The banter could pull them away from the topic sometimes, but they always come back to topic, and it just adds to the fun. Very sweet. Thanks, thanks, guys. We do like. What are we? What's the review number at? We're nine seventy six. Closing in on a thousand, yeah. so I can finally drink again. Nine seventy six. He's gonna get violent on this show. <laughs> I'm excited, but. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If it's your first time, welcome. Hopefully you stay. And if you're returning, we love you. So for Rob Fox, Jay Goldman, I'm Dan Register, and you just got soft served.